Today, let's journey into the amazing world of Zeus, the mighty god from ancient Greek tales. Zeus was like the super king of all the gods, and he lived way up high on a mountain named Mount Olympus. They even called him the Sky Father, because he took care of the sky and could make big storms with loud thunder and bright lightning. All the other gods respected Zeus a lot. They even called him father, even if they weren't his real children. When Zeus was around, all the gods would stand up because he was so important. Zeus had some special things that were like his favorite toys. He had a thunderbolt, which was like a super strong lightning bolt, an eagle, a big, strong bull, and he really liked oak trees. People from different places also thought Zeus was like their own weather gods. They all agreed that Zeus was the king of the sky. He even had a special stick called a scepter, which was like a king's special staff. Once upon a time, in a very old story, there were powerful gods, and one of them was Cronus. He did something very unkind to his own father, Uranus, and became the most important ruler of everything. Cronus got married to his sister Rhea, and they had six children together. They were named Hestia, Demeter, Hera, Hades, Poseidon, and the youngest and wisest one was Zeus. But Cronus was afraid that one of his own children would grow up to be even stronger than him just like he had become stronger than his dad. So, as soon as each baby was born, he swallowed them up. This made Rhea very, very sad. When it was time for Zeus to be born, Rhea decided she needed to do something to protect him. She went to her mom and dad, Gaia and Uranus, for help. They gave her a special plan. Rhea went to a beautiful place called Lictus, in an island called Crete. There, she gave birth to Zeus and then handed him over to her mom, Gaia. Gaia took Zeus to a cozy cave on a big mountain called Mount Aegeon. To trick Cronus, Rhea gave him a stone wrapped up like a baby. Cronus didn't realize it wasn't a real baby, and he swallowed it up, thinking it was his son. After Zeus was born in a cozy cave on Mount Dicte, his mom, Rhea, wanted to keep him safe. So, she asked some kind nymphs named Adrastia and Ida, who were the daughters of a wise man named Melissius, to take care of him. These nymphs fed Zeus with yummy milk from a special she-goat named Amalthea. They made sure to keep him happy and comfy. Meanwhile, the brave Coretes stood guard outside the cave. They tapped their spears on their shields to make noise and keep Cronus from hearing the baby's cries. Once Zeus grew into a strong and brave man, he hatched a clever plan with the help of Gaia to make Cronus give back his brothers and sisters, as well as the stone. Using his smarts and strength, Zeus played a big role in this tricky scheme. Cronus ended up spitting out the stone first, followed by Zeus's siblings, one by one, in the reverse order that he had swallowed them. Zeus then took that special stone and placed it at a sacred place called Delphi. It became a wonderful sign and an amazing wonder for people to see. These nymphs fed Zeus with yummy milk, from a special she-goat named Amalthea. They made sure to keep him happy and comfy. Meanwhile, the brave Curates stood guard outside the cave. They tapped their spears on their shields to make noise and keep Cronus from hearing the baby's cries. Once Zeus grew into a strong and brave man, he hatched a clever plan with the help of Gaia to make Cronus give back his brothers and sisters as well as the stone. Using his smarts and strength, Zeus played a big role in this tricky scheme. Cronus ended up spitting out the stone first, followed by Zeus's siblings, one by one, 
in the reverse order that he had swallowed them. Zeus then took that special stone and placed it at a sacred place called Delphi. It became a wonderful sign and an amazing wonder for people to see. Next, Zeus did something really kind. He freed the Cyclopes, who were very strong beings. In return, they were so thankful that they gave Zeus a powerful thunderbolt. This thunderbolt had been hidden away by Gaia. After that, a big and fierce battle called the Titanomachy began. On one side were the Olympians, led by Zeus, and on the other were the Titans, led by Cronus. They fought for control of the whole universe. The Olympians stood strong on Mount Olympus, while the Titans fought hard for Mount Othrys. This battle went on for ten long years, with neither side clearly winning. Then, following Gaia's wise advice, Zeus set free the hundred-handers, who had been locked away beneath the earth. He gave them special food and drink, and their strength and spirits were restored. They agreed to help Zeus in the war. With renewed vigor, Zeus launched a final powerful attack on the Titans. He sent bolts of lightning crashing down while the hundred-handers showered the Titans with a barrage of rocks. Finally, the Titans were defeated. Zeus sent them to a deep, dark place called Tartarus, and he appointed the hundred-handers to watch over them. After the great battle with the Titans, Zeus and his brothers, Poseidon and Hades, decided to divide the world among themselves. They did this by drawing lots. Zeus got the sky, Poseidon got the sea, and Hades got the mysterious underworld. The earth and Mount Olympus were left as places they all shared. Once Zeus became the king of everything, some challenges to his rule arose. The first big challenge came from a group called the Giants. They fought against the Olympian gods in a big battle called the Gigantomachy. According to Apollodorus, Gaia, who was still upset about her Titan children being locked up, gave birth to the Giants because she was so angry with Zeus. A prophecy came to the gods, saying that they couldn't defeat the Giants all on their own. They needed the help of a mortal. When Gaia heard this, she went looking for a special herb that would protect the giants from getting hurt. But Zeus was too clever for that. He told the sun, the moon, and the dawn to stop shining, so everything got dark. Then Zeus went and gathered all the special herbs himself. Afterward, he had Athena call for Heracles. During the battle, Porphyrion, one of the strongest giants, tried to attack Heracles and Hera. But Zeus had a trick up his sleeve. He made Porphyrion fall in love with Hera. Just when Porphyrion was about to do something bad, Zeus hit him with a powerful thunderbolt. Heracles then finished the job with a well-aimed arrow. And that's how Zeus and the Olympians managed to overcome the powerful giants in a tough battle. I hope you enjoyed this story. Have a wonderful night.